Good afternoon, dear students. Yesterday we have completed up to eight units. Today we'll start with ninth unit. Okay. Ninth unit is long run cost analysis. The first topic in the ninth unit is long run cost function. So what is this long run cost function means? Generally, it represents the minimum cost of producing a given level of output. When all the inputs and includes even capital also are variable. Whenever all these inputs and capital are in variable states, it can be adjusted to achieve the optimal production level. So for these long run cost function, there is a mathematical formula also there. As you can see in the screen, okay. Here, C of Q is the total cost of producing Q units of output. And K indicates to the capital. And L is for labor. And w is for the wage rate. Means cost of labor. And a small r is the rental. Okay, means cost of capital. And the minimum operator indicates that the function. So, here... In practically, the long run cost function is often represented by a specific functional form, like such as a COP dock loss production function, and which is very much related to output to the quantities of labor and capital inputs. The cost minimizing combination of labor and capital can use it to derive the long run cost function. So, the long run cost function is very important for firms. For what? For in determining their optimal production levels and cost structures over the long term. As it is helps them to identify the most cost effective way to produce a given level of output. For this purpose, cost run, long run cost function will be use it. So another topic is economies and diseconomies of scale. So what is this economies and diseconomics of scale means generally economies of scale refers to the cost advantages that a business can achieve by expanding its production. So whenever the company increases its outputs, it can lower its per unit but it, it can lower it per unit costs due to some factors like such as bulk purchasing of missionaries or like improving efficiency and spreading fixed costs over a large number of units like these. Examples of these economies of scale will include like you can see in the screen technical economics. These technical economics will use advanced technology and machinery for more efficiently and coming to managerial economics. It is better utilization of managerial expertise and administrative resources also and financial economies. These financial economics will access to cheaper capital or loans due to increase in credit worthiness. And marketing economics. Generally, these marketing economics will uh, spreading advertisements and uh, promotional activities or promotional costs or a larger output. And network economics. Generally, in increased value and efficiency as a more people use a product for service. In common in digital platforms. This is nothing but network economics from technical economics to network economics comes under economies of scale now we'll discuss with this economies of scale generally it occurs when a company grows too large and then inefficiencies start to increase the per unit cost of production in this particular time did these diseconomics of scale will be occurs so here, the management efficiencies means 
it is very difficult in managing a large workforce and and for complex operations the operations will become more complex so this is the management inefficiencies next coordination problems obviously definitely whenever the company is very much big there will be a coordination problems will come like challenging in communication or coordination across different departments and locations later motivation issue generally these motivation issues reduced employees motivation and productivity also you due to a lack of personal connection with the company so supply chain complexities these supply chain complexities are increased logistical and supply chain challenges as a company grows so next one is bureaucratic delays generally these bureaucratic delays means slower decision making it is very slower decision making process due to a increased layers of hierarchy so these diseconomies of scale will occur in large organizations so understanding the balance between economies and diseconomies of scale is a very crucial for business for what for to optimize their size and production process so another topic is learning curve so what is this learning curve generally it is also known as a experience curve also we can say it as an experience curve also generally these concepts will uh, this concept will describes how the efficiency of your worker or organizations improves with experience is nothing but learning curve as the production process is repeated and the time and the cost required to produce each unit and it is also typically decreases there are some key points are there for this learning curve first one is reduction in cost as reduction in cost means as experience with a task increases means workers become more skilled in any organization or in any role it's automatically leading to a decrease in per unit labor costs these can also apply to the use of materials processes and overhead costs this is nothing but reduction in cost and another one is improved efficiency over a time workers and organizations develop better methods like improving techniques and uh, streamline processes which leads to greater efficiency and productivity this is improved efficiency another one is predictability so in the learning curve it can often be quantified because it's allowing businesses to predict future performances and cost based on past experiences another one is cumulate to output generally this cumulate to output will make improvement in the performances in typically against cumulate to output because it's showing that a total production increases the time and cost per unit will decrease and final one is application the learning curve is generally used in various fields such as manufacturing software development and also service industries to improve better planning and also forecasting cost management etc so here you can see the formula of the learning curve here generally tn indicates to the time taken to produce the nth unit and t1 indicates to the time taken to produce the first unit and n is the cumulative number of a units produced 
and B is the learning rate, which is a negative number indicating the rate of improvements. Generally, understanding these uh, leveraging the learning curve generally allows businesses to plan for cost reductions. And also it sets realistic production goals. And it will maintain a competitive edge through continuous improvement. This concept is nothing but learning curve or experience curve also. Another one is economies of scope. Generally, what does these economies of scope means? It refers to a cost advantages that a company experiences when it increases the variety of goods and services and it produces. Generally, these economies of scale, which focuses on the cost benefits of producing a large quantity of a single product. Economies of scope arises from efficiencies gained through producing a diverse range of products. There are some key aspects are there for these economies of scope. The first one is shared resources. Means companies can use the same resources such as equipment, labor and materials to produce a multiple products, right? In this, it sharing a reduces the overall cost compared to producing each product in independently. So this is nothing but shared resources. And another one is diversification. Means this diversi diversification will producing a variety of products. And it can spread the risks also. And make the company more uh, resilient. Or we can say market fluctuations. If the demand for one product falls, the demand for another might be rise, stabilizing overall revenue in this diversification. Another one is cost synergies, means different products might share common processes or components also. Generally, it is very much leading to cost savings in production or marketing or distribution. Say, for example, uh, a dairy company is there. A dairy com company can produce milk, cheese, yogurt by using the same milk and same milk process facilities. This is nothing but cost synergies. It is a very best example for cost synergies. Next one is cross promotion. Means generally companies can uh, leverage marketing and distribution channels to promote their multiple products at a time means simultaneously to reducing advertising costs and increasing market reach this is nothing but cross promotion they will do multiple advertisings at a time to reduce advertising costs and last one is innovation and learning generally it will exposure to different markets and products can lead to innovation and improved processes that which will benefit the entire company. Generally for uh, um, you can take examples of these economies of scope means like uh, market manufacturing, technology, retails. Manufacturing means and for example, an automobile manufacturer producing a cars or trucks or uh, some other motorcycles. They can share research and development, production facilities and supply chains. This is manufacturing. Coming to technology, take a tech company. It is offering both hardware and software like with uh, like computers and non-computers. And it can use its expertise and infrastructure 
for across both the product lines. This is nothing but technology. And retails, you can take retails. In retails means uh, like uh, some supermarkets, there are some benefits from economies of scope are there by selling a wide range of products from groceries to household goods. Using the same store space and logistic network is nothing but retails. Generally, by exploiting these economics of scale, companies can lower their average costs or increasing operational efficiencies and enhance competitive advantage in diverse markets. So this is nothing but economies of scale. Next topic is, hope you are clear with these topics. And another one is cost function and its determinants. Generally, the cost function is, it is a mathematical relationship that uh, describes how the firm production costs change with varying level of output. Uh, it is very crucial in understanding how costs behave in a making decisions about pricing or production levels and profitability like these, etc. This is the mathematical function of cost function. C of Q is equals to F plus V of Q. Here C of Q represents the total cost of a function of output Q. And F is the fixed cost. Because there is no change in that particular cost. It's a level of output. And V of Q is the variable cost which changes with the level of output. Okay. And there are some determinants are there for this cost function. Output level. Generally, these output level is a very primary determinant of a cost function. Because the quantity of goods or a services produced as output increases. Variable costs typically increases, although fixed costs remain constant in these output level. Another one is input prices. The costs of input such as labor, raw materials, energy generally significantly affect the cost function. Higher input prices leads to the higher production costs. This is input prices. And technology. Technology means we all are known. Advances in technology can reduce a production costs. Why? Likewise, by increasing efficiency and productivity. And also improved productivity techniques and automation can lower both variable and fixed costs, costs also. Another one is economies of scale. As a production scale up, firms may experience lower average costs due to economies of scale. These effect is captured in the cost function showing a reduction in average cost with increased outputs this is nothing but economies of scale and economies of scope means in these economies of scope it will producing a variety of products and it can lead to cost savings by sharing resources and processes which influences the cost function by lowering overall costs is nothing but economies of scope. Later, production efficiency. In this production efficiency, which the firm converts inputs into a outputs, which the firm converts inputs uh, uh, into a outputs effects in the cost function. It is generally higher efficiency to reducing the wastes and costs. Okay, next, another one is regulation and taxes. Means government regulations, taxes, subsidies can alter production costs. With some regulations can increase costs, while some subsidies might reduce them. Next, market conditions. Market conditions such as uh, competition, demand fluctuations, 
as a and a, like supply chain dynamics these will impacts input prices and production costs thus automatically influencing the cost function so there are some type of cost functions are there there are three type of cost functions are there first one is linear cost function you can see the mathematical function of this linear cost function this linear cost function will assumes that costs change at a constant rate with output is nothing but linear cost function and second one is quadratic cost function it includes a term for increasing marginal costs is quadratic cost function and another last one is cubic cost function generally it further allows for more complex relationship between costs and outputs these are the formulas for linear cost function quadratic cost function and cubic cost function by applying these formulas we can get the accurate cost function understanding the cost function and its determinants is very essential for for many firm because to optimize the production set the competitive price and maximize profitability this will useful a lot and it is also a important topic and coming to another one estimation of cost function estimation of cost function means estimating a cost function that involves using statistical methods to determine what to determine the relationship between firm's total costs and its output levels so along with this other influencing factors also there here are some structured approaches to estimating a cost functions you can see here these are the steps in estimating a cost function the first step is data collection means gathering data on total costs and output levels and also input prices like other relevant variables over a specific period of time these data can come from accounting records production reports and market surveys also you can gather the data by production reports and accounting records and marketing surveys and after the second step is choosing the functional form yes choosing the functional form means as we have just now we have discussed the uh, types of cost functions we need to choose the best cost function among all those cost functions decide on the appropriate function form for the cost function generally common forms just we discussed linear quadratic and cubic and another one more cost function also there which is log linear it is very rare generally everyone will use as the linear quadratic or cubic this log linear is very rare function later third step is to specify the model means formulate the cost function based on theoretical and practical considerations say for example a quadratic model might be a specified as one formula so by specifying particular model is the third step with those particular related mathematical formula along with the related mathematical formula to apply later fourth step is to estimate parameter means by using some regression analysis to estimate the parameters like beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 so on like this of of the cost functions like ordinary least squares also OLS, we can say it as an OLS. Ordinary least least squares is here. Some common methods for these linear models. 
वेल नॉन नॉन लीनियर मॉडल्स में रिक्वायर सम मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स एस्टिमेशन टेक्निक्स लाइक नॉन लीनियर रिग्रेशन और मैक्सिम लाइटलीहुड एस्टिमेशन आफ्टर फिफ्थ स्टेप इज टू मॉडल वैलिडेशन मीन एसेसिंग द गुडनेस ऑफ फिट एंड रिलेबिलिटी ऑफ द estimated cost function there are some key diagnostics also there for this model validation like r squared adjust the r squared f statistics residual analysis so we need to identify the model model validation among all these them later sixth step is to hypothesis testing means conducting some hypothesis tests on a estimated parameters for example like t tests like this to determine their statistical significance and final step is to economic interpretation interpreting the estimated coefficients in the context of economic theory say for example in a quadratic cost function are there beta 1 represents the marginal cost at lower level of output while beta 2 captures the rate at which marginal cost change as a output increases see i have gathered one example also for this estimation of cost function take a look on this example okay so that you can get how we can make the cost function so you can you can take a screenshot also so in this example you can see here first they have specified the model estimated parameters validate the model interpret the results here estimating the cost function provides insights to a cost behavior of the firm aiding in decision making related to production levels and pricing strategies and overall financial planning proper model specifications and estimation of validation are very crucial to obtaining accurate and meaningful results so are you clear with this topic so another topic is managerial uses of cost function generally these cost function is a vital tool for managers in various decision making processes within an any organization here are some primary managerial uses are there for the cost function first one is pricing decisions pricing decisions means understanding the cost structures helps managers as setting prices the cover costs and achieve desired profit margins by analyzing these these cost function managers can determine the minimum price needed to break even and assess how prices changes affect profitability this is nothing but pricing decisions second one is budgeting and forecasting here generally the managers use the cost function to project future cost based on the expected levels of production these helps in creating a accurate budgets and financial forecasts later cost control and reduction by identifying the components of the cost function managers can pinpoint areas where cost savings can be achieved these may involve negotiating better rates for inputs or maximizing products also another one is production planning means the cost function generally aids to determine the most cost effective levels of productions managers can use these information to plan production schedules manage to manage inventory levels also and optimize the use of resources later investment decisions 
when considering a new investments in technology like equipment or processes in this scenario the cost function helps to evaluate the potential impact on costs managers can compare the costs and benefits of different investment options to make a informed decisions this is nothing but investment decisions later profitability analysis these will analyze the profitability of different products or services by understanding how costs vary with output and managers here they can identify with products contribute most to profits and focus on the those offers the best returns later break even analysis managers use the cost function to perform break even analysis determining the level of output needed to cover all costs economic of scale in this the cost function generally helps to managers to understand how costs will change with different levels of productions enabling them to identifying economies of scale these insights can guide decisions about expanding their uh, uh, production capacity or uh, consolidation operations like this cost allocation in generally some multi product firms the cost function assists in allocating costs accurately more accurately among different products or services this en ensures that pricing and profitability analysis these are generally based on realistic understanding of cost contributions next performance evaluation managers can also use the cost function to evaluate the performance of different departments or production units by comparing the actual co costs to the estimated cost functions like this they will identify inefficiencies also for to they will identify areas which they need to be improved final one is strategic plan so generally the cost structure is very crucial for long term strategies plan managers can assess the cost compl compl implications of different uh, strategies options such as uh, entering new markets diversifying product lines or restructuring the operations like this okay with this we have completed our ninth unit is everyone clear about your ninth unit okay okay thank you neeraj so 10th unit is market structure and barriers to entry here the first topic is classification of market structure generally what does this market structure means it is it is classified uh, some it is classified by based on some characteristics such as like uh, number of firms in the market and uh, nature of the products offered and uh, entry and exit of the product and the degree of uh, competitions here are some main classifications are there generally they these four are main classic market classifications these two monopsony and uh, oligopsony will use very rare this is very rare case so let us discuss about classifications of market structure first one is perfect competition in this perfect competition market the number of firms is many small firms are there and the generally the product nature for this competition perfect competition is homogeneous products means like identical products it is the ease of uh, uh, entry and exit is very easy there is no barriers for perfect competition market 
so the degree of competition is very high and firms are price takers generally some characteristics for these uh, perfect competition is perfect information about all buyers and sellers have full information about prices and products and there is no control over prices individual firms cannot influence market prices so there is no control over prices like example market agricultural markets or stock markets these are the best examples for perfect competition and second one is monopolistic competition in these monopolistic competition the number of firms will be many firms are will be there there are more firms are there and the product nature is differentiated products slightly different from whether compared to other products and ease of entry and exit is very relatively easy few barriers are there in monopolistic competition and degree of competition is very high firms can complete on price quality and marketing some of the characteristics for this monopolistic competition is product differentiation means each firm offers a product that differs slightly from others and some control over they will have some control over their price firms can set prices within a range due to product differentiation examples for for, for this uh, monopolistic competition means like uh, clothing brands or uh, restaurants consumer electronics these are the best examples for monopolistic competition later oligopoly in this oligopoly there are very few large firms are there number of firms and product nature is it is can be homogeneous or differentiated product and entry and exit is very difficult because there is very high barriers to entry and degree of competition will be some moderate to high firms are interdependent some characteristics of theory this is firms must consider the actions and reactions of competitors when making decisions and some possible collusions like uh, firms may collude to set the prices or output leading to higher uh, prices for consumers example for these oligopoly means like automobile industry or airline industry telecommunications etc are the examples of these oligopoly market next one is monopoly com monopoly means here there, there is the only one number of firm will be the only one firm will be there one company or one shop the product nature is very unique product with no close substitutes also the entry and exit in this monopoly is very very difficult and high barriers are there to entry the degree of competition is none because the firm is a price maker some characteristics for this monopoly is a, it is a single seller in in monopolistic controls the entire market supply because only single seller will be available in monopoly and price maker because the firm can set prices since it has no competition high barriers to entry it can be due to legal restrictions or high startup costs or some control of key resources utility companies or electricity water are some examples of these monopoly also some patented drugs also one of the example for this monopoly next monopsony generally here only one buyer will be there not sellers number of buyers only one buyer will be available in monopsony product nature is it can vary often labor or specific resources the entry and exits are varies but typically different for other buyers to enter 
degree of competition is none on the buyer's side. Only degree of competition will be there in only seller side. Some characteristics for this monopsone is single buyer. And price makers for inputs. The buyer has significant control over the prices paid for inputs. Example, uh, a large employer in a small town. Government has to, has to sole purchase of the defense equipment. And uh, next coming to oligopsone. Here, few large buyers are there. And here can vary often raw materials or specialized products, product nature. And entry and exit is very difficult or high barriers for other buyers are there. And degree of competition is very limited competition will be there in oligopsone among buyers. Some characteristics means uh, each buyer has significant make market power because only a few buyers are there. Interdependence, it is interdependence because buyers must uh, consider the actions of other buyers. Example for this oligopsony means large supermarket chains purchasing from farmers, large manufacturers buying raw materials. These are the examples for this oligopsony. Generally, by understanding these market structures will help in analyzing the behavior of firms within different industries, their pricing strategies and market power. And the overall market dynamics can be understood by these classifications of market share. Next So another topic is factors determining the nature of competition. Factors determining this nature of competition is the market. It is determined by various factors that influence how firms interact, how prices are set and how products are differentiated. These factors include the like number of firms, product differentiation, Barriers to entry and exit, market information, control over the prices. These all are the determining factors of the nature of competition. As you can learn this topic, it is a somewhat easy topic so that we can go to another topic since we have to complete all the units in for today's session. And next topic is barriers to entry means there are some barriers to entry or there will be some obstacles that make it very difficult for new firms to enter into the market right mm, these barriers can vary take various forms and significantly impact the level of competition within a market. Here are some main types of barriers to entry are there. First one is economic barriers. Economic barriers means capital requirements or uh, economies of scale, cost advantages independent of scale these are all are will comes under economic barriers means for example like starting an airline requires it is significant capital to purchase airlines and establish infrastructure later uh, large uh, some other example is large manufacturers like automobile companies and established oil companies have access to prime drilling locations and better technology these are the economical barriers and coming to legal and regulatory barriers means 
license and permits and uh, parents and proprietary knowledge some standards and regulations will be there restrictions all these will come under legal and regulatory barriers strategic barriers means predatory pricing means established firms may temporarily lower prices to a level that is unsustainable for new entrants or control of essential resources next aggressive advertising and brand loyalty these all are will comes under strategic barriers next technological barriers means some proprietary technology or research or development all these will comes under technological barriers network effects generally these network effects means the value of a product increases as more people use it creating a strong incumbent advantage sunk costs means costs that have already been incurred and cannot be recovered which may deter new entrants due to the risk of not recovering these investments example high advertising or development costs in industries like software development etc later customer switching costs costs that uh, customers incur whenever switching from one product to another including time money effort many like a business software systems that require significant training and setup so creating reluctance to switch to a new provider for barriers to entry play a very crucial role in <clears throat> shaping the quantitative competitive landscape of an industry then can protect a established firms from new competition and maintain higher profit margins okay another topic is strategic entry barriers there are some strategic entry barriers are there like uh, predatory pricing limit uh, pricing product uh, proliferation brand loyalty and advertising exclusive contracts regulatory capture acquisition and merger these all are comes under strategic entry barriers these also some barriers in this unit so you can learn this not much important topic so that we can go to another one pricing analysis of markets yes pricing analysis of market means one minute generally this is a pricing analysis is a markets it involves studying the factors that influence pricing decisions by firms understanding the pricing strategies used and evaluated in the impact of pricing on market dynamics here are some key aspects are there for pricing analysis first one is market structure in this market structure there will be a perfect competition or monopolistic competition oligopoly or monopoly as we know, just now we have discussed these topics will be we have these competitions will be there in market structure later price determinants price determinants means some costs including production marketing distribution costs etc costs demand competition regulations market conditions all these are the some determinants of the pricing later pricing strategies pricing strategies means cost plus pricing is the one of the main strategies in pricing adding a markup to the cost of production and value based pricing 
in setting some prices based on the perceived value to the customer. Price is giving means setting a high initial price to maximize profits before lowering it. Next penetration pricing. Setting a low initial price to gain the market share quickly. Next dynamic pricing and predatory pricing also the some of the strategies in pricing strategies. Next price elasticity. We all are know the elastic demand, inelastic and determinants. Just yesterday's class we have discussed. That is nothing but price elasticity. Later price discrimination. Charging different prices to different uh, customer segments based on their willingness to pay is the price discrimination. Next one, competitive pricing analysis. Means analyzing competitors, pricing strategies and adjusting pricing accordingly. Price leadership, price wars, these all are, are comes under competitive pricing analysis next pricing tactics some psychological pricing bundle pricing promotional pricing loss leader pricing these will come under pricing tactics eighth one is price monitoring and optimization means regularly tracking prices of competitors and market conditions adjusting prices based on market trends Customer feedbacks and sales data are the price monitoring and optimization. Last one is pricing and product life cycle. In this product life cycle, we all are know that the introduction stage, growth stage, and maturity stage, decline stage are there. These four stages is the product life cycle. First, so final conclusion is that pricing analysis is essential for firms to make informed pricing decisions, maximize profits and maintain competitiveness in the market. It involves a very deep understanding of market dynamics and consumer behavior and competitive strategies to set prices that are optimal for both the firm and its customer. With this, we have completed the 10th unit, no, 11th unit. It is pricing under perfect competition and pure monopoly. Here the first topic is characteristics of perfect competition. It is just a characteristics, not any topic or theory. Let us know very randomly. Uh, in perfect competition, there are some large numbers of buyers and sellers will be there. Homogeneous, genius, homogeneous of the product means as I have explained in the earlier topic, type of the identical, identical of the product. Next, profit in perfect information, free entry and exit means entry, entry and exit is uh, free in this perfect competition. Zero market power, yes. Zero market power means individual firms have no influence over the market prices and must accept the price set by the market. It is zero market power. Next, perfect mobility of factors of production. It uh, resources can move freely between industries and ensuring the resources are allocated efficiently. Profit maximization, as we know, in perfect competition, there is no transaction costs and price takers means. Firms are price takers because meaning they accept the market prices as given a adjust their quantity and supplied accordingly. This is nothing but price takers. Short run and long run equilibrium. In the short run, firms can make economic profits or losses, but in the long run, economic profits are driven to zero as new firms enter into the market these are the characteristics of perfect competition another topic is
profit maximizing output in the short run. In the short run, the films are perfect competition and it aims to maximize profits by producing at a quantity where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. These occurs when the marginal cost curve intersects the marginal revenue curve. Okay. So the first step here to profit maximizing output in the short run is calculate marginal revenue. For a perfect competition firm, marginal revenue equals to the marginal price. This is because the firm can sell all of its outputs at the market price. But selling additional units requires lowering the prices for all units sold. This is calculating marginal revenue. Next one is determining marginal cost. Yes, marginal cost is a additional cost. It is incurred from producing one more unit of output. Find profit maximizing quantity. Identify the quantity where marginal cost equals to marginal revenue. Okay, at this quantity, the firm is producing the level of outputs where the extra cost of producing one more unit is exactly equal to the extra revenue gained from selling one more unit. Next, you need to compare marginal cost to the, to the marginal level. Later, profit calculation. In the profit calculation, calculate the total revenue by multiplying the price of P by the quantity sold. Calculate total cost by multiplying the average total cost. If the profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. And last step is evaluate economic profit or loss. If total revenue exceeds the total cost, the firm means economic profit. If the total cost exceeds the total revenue, the firm incurs an economic losses. Next topic is profit maximizing output in the long run. Here, some first one is zero economic profit. In the long run, firms in perfect competition earn zero economic profits. This means the total revenue equals to total costs, including both explicit, means accounting and implicit, means opportunity. Next, adjustment process. Yes, if there is adjustments are required in film, it is earning economic profits in the short run and new films will enter the market attracted by the profit opportunities. As a new firm enters market supplies increases leading to a lower price ma market price. The lower price reduces the profit of existing firms, eventually driving them to zero economic profits. So, the higher price increases the profits of remaining firms, eventually driving them to zero economic profits. Next, long run equilibrium. It occurs when firm is in perfect competition and are producing at their minimal average total cost and earning zero economic profit. At that time, long run equilibrium will appear. Profit maximizing output. In the long run, the profit maximizing output occurs where marginal cost equals to marginal revenue. And it is equals to market price also. Later, graphical representation. Means showing on a graph. This long run equilibrium for a perfect competitor's films. It is where the demand curve intersects the average total cost curve. At its lowest point. Later, implications. In the long run, firms in perfect competition produce at the minimum efficient scale and meaning 
they are producing at the lower cost per unit or not. These are the implications. Next topic. So, characteristics of monopoly. We all know the characteristics of monopoly. Single seller, no close substitutes, market makers, high barriers to entry, unique product or services. So another topic is perfect competition versus monopoly. These perfect competition and monopoly means here. Generally, consumer surplus means in perfect competition, consumer surplus is maximized because firms produce the at the lowest possible prices, where marginal cost equals marginal utility. In monopoly, the consumer surplus is lower than in perfect competition because the monopoly charges a higher price and produces less output. Next, producer surplus. In perfect competition, firms in better competition can earn zero economic profits in the long run, leading to efficient allocation of resources and maximizing producing surplus. In monopoly, it can earn economic profit leading to higher producer surplus compared to the perfect competition. Efficiency means in perfect competition it leads to allocative and productive efficiencies as resources are allocated to their most valued uses and production occurs at the lowest costs. In monopolies, they are allocatively and productively inefficient because they produce less than the socially optimal level, total welfare. In perfect competition, total welfare means consumer surplus plus consumer surplus, producer surplus. It is maximized because resources are efficiently allocated and prices are kept low. Coming to monopoly, the total welfare is lower in a monopoly and compared to competitive, perfect competition market. Due to the loss of consumer surplus from higher prices and lower output. So, another unit is 12th unit rising under monopolistic and oligopoly competition. Here first topic is price and output determination in short run. Price and output determination in short run means in short run generally firms can adjust their output levels to some extent but are constrained by fixed factors such as uh, plant size and technology. The price and output determination in the short run is influenced by the firm's production costs and the market demand and its production product. Here, profit maximization. Obviously, we all are know profit maximization means maximizing the profit in any organization or a company. Shutdown point means. If prices falls below AVC, the firm should shut down in the short run to minimize the losses. This is because continuing to produce would mean covering only variable cost. While fixed costs remain unrecoupled. Later market equilibrium. The overall market price and output are determined by the intersection of market and demand and supply curves. Individual firms in a competitive markets are price takers and will produce where P is equals to MC as long is market equality. 
later impact of fixed costs fixed costs do not impact short term productions decisions directly as they are sunk costs however they influence the short term decisions if price falls before abc later last one is time horizon in these uh, short run firms cannot adjust their fixed factors of production such as plant size this limits their ability to respond to changes in demand and affecting their pricing and output decisions another topic is oligopolistic competition so we all are know that oligopolistic competition means only few large firms will be there it is interdependence meaning that the actions of one firm will impact the others and barriers to entry there are some barriers to entry are there such as high startup costs economies of scale etc production difference product differentiations firms may engage in product differentiations to discuss their products from those of their competitors these can take the form of branding advertising or unique products etc non price competition means competition in oligopolistic markets often extends beyond price to include other factors such as product quality market services customer services etc price rigidity means prices in oligopolistic market needs to be relatively stable due to the interdependence of firms and the desire to avoid price wars mutual interdependence because firms are aware of their interdependence they often engage in strategic decision making taking into account likely response of their competitors and last unit is final unit is pricing strategies the first topic in pricing strategies is concentration ratios and uh, Harfindai, Harshikman index, and contestable markets are all concepts in industrial organization and market structure analysis also. First one is concentration ratio. So, what does this concentration ratio means? These ratios measure the extent to which a market is dominated by a few large firms. They are usually calculated by summing the market shares of the largest firms in the market. For example, a four firm concentration ratio. It adds up the market shares of the four largest firms. Concentration ratios will give an indication of the level of competition in market. Higher concentration ratios, such as less competition. While lower ratios suggest more competition. This is nothing but 